Oh, I didn't see you there. Come join me, won't you? Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, he and I kind of lost contact because I've uh, been, you know, focusing on my life up here for the past three years and a bit. Um, also, before that, I was always travel nursing uh, and uh, doing stuff in Toronto. Um, and he was always doing his life, either going to Peru or Ecuador and then coming back to Florida. He's still teaching as a substitute. Um, and uh, after, oh geez, it's been like 15 years or so. It's just like, hey, you know, I should give dad a phone call. Um, Tato Oksana was sick with COVID, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to reconnect. And we did. And he's cool. his usual chipper self. He's always like, hi, how you doing? Everything's great over here. You can come down, blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, he's the eternal optimist. And he says he wants to live until he's 185. So it's like, oh, great. <laughs> sure. So much energy, this man. So that was fun. Um, uh, it'll be good to see him, but uh, it's not going to be oh, for a long stretch of time. So I think it's doable. And it just turns out that, yeah, it happens right smack in the middle of my vacation time. So, yeah, I'll go do it. It's, it seems like a good idea, good timing. Another really cool memory I have when we were kids was uh, you had this interesting um, cardboard book about the Muppets with this little recorder um, player with the record built in the pages. So you put the recorder on top of the actual disc that was embedded in the page and it would play a song. That's right. Do you remember that? Yeah, my good buddy here, Animal here, see? Say hi, Animal. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Very integral part of the past with music right there. Very glad the drum set. Dr. Um, Teeth, yes. Stuff too, I mean, it was a little weird little contraption with a little speaker on it and batteries. And basically, it was almost like a mini, I guess, recording device, but it would pick up the grooves. Yeah. Open the book, it had little circles that you'd put down, it would pick up the grooves almost like a record. Yeah. So maybe, maybe it had a little needle or something, and it would play what it was there for like a minute or two, and then you would turn the page over and turn on to a different spot. Yeah. So would, because it was like the Muppet Show, for example. It was <laughs> awesome. Up, uh, growing up, like live in my house, I had it right there. Like it was pretty cool. And there was other books as well, but that was the main one that, yeah, that stood out. It was pretty cool. I mean. That was always a great time. I remember that early, early 80s. Uh, Muppet Show. Quality entertainment. Well, Friday night's Muppet Show. <laughs> <laughs> I had the whole band and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ray. Yes. Everybody. Floyd. Our... Jan. Uh, Zoot. Yeah, yeah. Horse Animal. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. Went, wow. That's a cool band. <laughs> 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 I think that's kind of the spark kind of thing right there. Definitely Maybe. inspiration, yeah. Uh, what's going on with Driven with Aggression? Because you guys uh, had honed in the thrash. You had gotten to uh, uh, album speed, recorded the album, and uh, have played some shows, including uh, Rockpile, right? When they had that big um, metal extravaganza. You were you were one of the uh, bands that, uh, 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 that played there. I got a bunch of fireworks to I've shoot off later. I've known this guy later. since I was three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you gotta talk more and ask pretty old questions. So Andy, uh, where are we? What day is it today? Canada Day. Canada Day. He's got the hat on. Yeah. Got the hat on. Please. And uh, we are gonna be. Well, you're gonna be playing your band, Driven yeah. with a Direction. Fantastic. We put in a first album, second album in the works. In the works. In the works. Slow progression. We're all 
jobs and families and blah blah blah, right? So that's how it goes. And yeah. then our, our engineer guy has jobs and things too, so it, it's just a matter of timing. Drums are done, supposedly. Mm. So we have to go in and start doing the guitar parts and then the singing and then put it all together. Yeah. Yeah. So, what studio are you going to? We are actually playing at my engineer's house. He okay. set it up as a studio. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, it's like a three-story or two-story, whatever. Um, and the drums are everything in the basement. Yeah. Mic it all up. He's got a huge snake that goes through the ceiling all the way down onto the walls. Oh, nice. And then all the stuff is there, too. And then he hooks it up to his uh, computers all upstairs. Oh, cool. So it's uh, two big screens and stuff. Yeah. So we're looking forward to it. It's like a slow drag on process because it's life. Right? Life happens. It's life. But it's, it's not just uh, creating the music and uh, recording it, it's also playing it and oh, yeah. promoting it. And that's what this today is all about, yeah? Partly today and then some more down the line too. Yeah. What's the connection to Rockpile or to get this event going? Well, on? we saw it on the internet and just say, hey, you guys want to try it? I said, okay, so why not? Put our name in, it's called Mup. Originally, we're going to do the Friday night, but we changed it to the Saturday for Canada Day. We all said, all right, whatever, let's do it. Just waiting for this to go away. <laughs> What's right here in the morning? I think it just do you have any expectations about uh, what's going to be happening? We're going to groove it up so bad that people are all going to come out and go, what the fuck is going on? That's this guy. He, he's Rudy, the guitar player right there. Presenting. That's right, Canada Day. That was a lot of fun. That's what um, it was Canada Day. That was slowly part of the rejuvenation because the band took a big break for so long. And of course, then I was jamming with you and Bo for a while. <clears throat> and then I kind of rekindled everything. But um, along the way, we were doing okay. And then it goes back to the COVID thing, kind of stopped things. Oh, that's right. We were also recording some more stuff at the time, and that still needs to be finished. <laughs> you, no, you had recorded Driven with Aggression, uh, the uh, self-titled album. What was that like? Oh, that was old, crazy. We were very green, let's just put it that way. <laughs> but that having a dream, uh, having a team, and putting it down on tracks and mastering it, and you got something now. That's like an album. That that is yours. You can say you created this. That's awesome. Yeah, it was quite an experience. It was uh, amazing. Uh, we went to uh, Metalworks Studio, uh, which is uh, run by Gil Moore, I do believe. That was, uh, that was the guy. Uh, maybe I said his name wrong. Sorry. Uh, but uh, he's the drummer from Triumph. Oh. It, so that was his studio, Metalworks, and he'd have all kinds of uh, bands and singers and stuff come in. And the funny thing was, I've been there before because back in time, we did a whole thing where you and I and everyone in our choir at St. Demetrius, we all went there and we recorded uh, some songs, if you uh, remember. I think I do remember this. Yeah, it was an amazing experience. It was like that was Metalworks studio, and then years later, I'm there with my metal band recording, going, "Oh my god, I've been here. This is crazy. It's like time warp." 
And they're like, you've been here? I was like, yeah, me and the choir, school choir, we're all here singing. Okay. Uh, yeah, just having a good time there, being in this massive room with stuff on the walls and on the ceiling to keep the sound like from jumping. Right, you know, the, the acoustics, and, yeah. Yeah, like, to keep the acoustics well. And this amazing huge sound board, we're like, wow. Like, <laughs> so many buttons. You know, like, this is sick. Yeah, it's 24 track. We're like, whoa, 24 tracks, this is crazy. <laughs> and then, uh, like, years later, when I, with my, one of my first bands, you know, we get this little four track little box thing. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, but I was like, yeah. I was on a 24 track before. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyways, the, the studio being in there with the other band, my metal band, DWA, Driven with Aggression, um, that was quite an experience. And we were, unfortunately, did it a little too quick. It moved along too fast. And to be honest, we wish we had a better sense of what we were doing. Oh. Because it was it was okay, but in the end, the way things were mixed wasn't really right. It was kind of rushed a little bit. So one day when we have the time, we have the reel to reels. We will redo all that stuff. And make it sound Ooh. Better. Yeah, but that'll take some time. Uh, but fast forward to now, as you know, things are much easier. You've got uh, you know everything on your computer now. You know, yes. The right. digital audio workstation. I, I actually right. am watching a, a 15 hour video that I paid $250 or something because it was half off for Christmas special. Um, it's a guy named Trey something or other. He's, uh, he's into metal and he does everything right in front of you. He's recorded himself and clipped it, edited it, and he starts from nothing and he comes up with a song. It's really, really good. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I will send you a link to it, and uh, uh, I want to know what you think. Definitely, sure. Yeah, maybe we get some more insights on what to do. <laughs> yeah, he, he just, he, well, I mean, he has his style, but it's all very metal. So uh, I can take a lot out of it and translate it to whatever I kind of need it to, but this is right up your alley. Like, you will appreciate the tones that he uses, um, some of the basic equipment that you need for every home studio. And um, this is where I kind of want to transition into uh, your own jam space and what you're working on in your home studio. Uh, you got the drums, you've got loads of guitars and uh, and equipment. Describe what you got Wait. over there. Wait, I still have some of yours here on the... Uh, oh, God, yeah. I've got them all put away here. Thank you. Don't Thank you so much for holding on to those. Like, ugh. Do any wrench, don't worry. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the least I could do because I know you couldn't take everything over there. So yeah, and I just kept on collecting more. Um, yeah, that, you that do have a computer, but do you record on it yet, or are you planning on it, or? That's one of the recent ones, the LTD, which is nice. Cleaned it all up with the ESP pickups. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, you were saying. Thank you very much. Um, but you, so you got the instruments, you got speakers, and a computer, and a keyboard. I mean, you have a studio. What are you uh, doing with it? Is there anything that you're working project-wise? Is Griffin uh, still into the electronica and wants to do his pad work? Are you incorporating any of that? Well, we do our separate jamming here, of course. But he does his other music, of course, uh, on his own. Um, here, uh, but... Uh, yeah, things come along here just more relaxed and slower pace, but uh, it's good. Because That's cool. Here and every other day, whenever I can, I come down, make some noise, and then if it's a good tune or a good vibe, then I'll remember it the next few days. Yeah. Because, funny, I, I was recording a lot of things for a while, but then I noticed a lot of these things weren't that good. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just kind of remembered with with one of my old friends uh, I still talk to him here on and off on Facebook and everything uh, Tim Smith oh cool he, he said one of the best things years ago to me he goes if you're writing a song and you can't remember it the next day 
it wasn't worth it. It's not good. But if you wake up the next day and it's the first thing that pops in your head, then it's worth it and it's a good song. Uh. And I'm doing that instead. <clears throat> and I found a better vibe going on, you know, and, and better quality of stuff coming out of my playing. Okay. So where I'm at now. So some of the things not enough some of the riffs were okay that I recorded but most of them man and you know, it wasn't really worth it because they didn't just show up again in my, my memory the next few days so you know, the good things just pop out and the bad the other things that are like so so you just forget about mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I, I remember you telling me that phrase before but I didn't realize it was Tim Smith I hope to do some of that in the near future too especially with Griffin some of our own things together. Yeah. And promote <laughs> it, promote it, promote it. Um, that's what things are doing, uh, are happening these days. If you are able to record, everyone's got a cell phone, so you can just start recording stuff. Um, the trick is making it look easy. Because <laughs> you can do some pretty basic crappy stuff and then put it out there and then, meh, it's junk. But if you have a product and you want to promote yourself, the tools are all there online through, through this technology. Uh, probably some deals from Long and McQuaid or uh, uh, maybe even something used. Um, getting uh, uh, equipment on Wish, for example, has been something a buddy of mine in Edmonton has been doing and he set up his own little studio. He's got a microphone and filters and um, yeah, he's doing it all from a corner room on the third floor of his uh, studio apartment and uh, nice. he's got things tricked out. Nice. Well, that, that's the way I've done some of my stuff here too. I mean, I've got a PA system here and everything. Uh, the speakers were given to me for free. Oh, oh. <laughs> and the PA itself was used from Long McQuaid. You know. There you go. And, uh, and then you gave me the old uh, Roland keyboard, which is fun. <laughs> so it still works. <laughs> the pitch shifter. Zinslick. Is that the proper term, Zinslick? <laughs> Zinzik, yeah. <laughs> the doodad. Yeah. It's just looking for opportunities here and there for things, but as time goes on, I'll just keep building up. Like I said, I need a few more microphones and things, and then get more things recorded. Yeah. yeah. Nowadays, it's the uh, you come up with one, two, three songs, put it on Spotify, on GarageBand, on SoundCloud, and then try to promote yourself and hope you get noticed and picked up. And then you can start coming up with the other ideas for your album that they can sell. Yeah, that's right. And even on uh, people are, of course, you can also go, of course, on uh, Instagram as well. So. Yes, yeah. Instagram, TikTok, short little yeah. snippets. Uh, put your stuff on Pinterest. I have accounts on all of these. I'm just not using it because I only created them last week. The, the TikTok, it's, it, that stuff's crazy. I mean, there's some stuff that Griffin's made and people are using it already. Oh, nice. They, all the reach of how far it goes for people to hear your stuff. Mm -hmm. Hear something they like, they just keep downloading and using it, using it over and over for their own videos and things too, which is amazing. No, so even he can teach us a few things. Well, he's, he's pretty uh, pretty good at what he's doing. I mean, he does the same thing where he's got his whole program, I guess, Garage Man or something like that. And he, okay. you know, do 24 or whatever, how many instruments he wants, puts them all across the screen and does one thing at a time and then puts them all together and makes a whole song, two, three minutes long, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, although well, he likes the the whole electronic music, Skrillex and whatnot, but I'm not even sure if that's com become passe yet or not. Well, sort of that style, but sort of not. A little bit different now too, where his his music has a bit more like he's taught me some new things, which is amazing. He does a lot of this stuff where his even his drum beat in the in the songs is a lazy drum beat. He calls it, so it's always like half a second to a second late so the drums sound like they're lazy and going but people like that 
Mm. Dial. And it's like, wow, wow, this is kind of different. Popular music. Well, underground popular, and now it's getting even bigger. Um, it's kind of like a lot of instrumental stuff, basically. There's no real singing on it, really. Except for one or two songs, he had some samples of stuff, so... Samples and auto-tune. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how things kind of go. So far, so good. Uh, oh, one last thing. Uh, biographies. You're into reading different uh, musicians' biographies and stuff. Right, right. That's been a fun thing because most of my reading is... I don't really enjoy it. Let's just put it that way. I, I am a very, very visual. For all the people out there that are into visual, that, that's, that's, I get along with you. You're into cinema, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, movies and videos, you know, YouTube, all that stuff. Oh, you understood Stand By Me long, long way before I did. Oh, yeah, you know, all that stuff, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so, but what's happened the last five, maybe even ten years, yeah, maybe even before that, maybe, maybe, yeah, about ten years at least, I've started realizing there's all these amazing autobiographies and biographies on bands that I like and artists and stuff. So a few years ago, I just said, oh, let's just try this. And now I'm hooked. So because it's, it's really fun, you know, listening to your heroes on the, making their music, but then reading their books that they make and then hearing all the stories again and some new stories reading about them. It is just really cool. So it keeps me interested and in wanting to read now because their stories are like huh, everything from when they're little kids to like all the crazy, you know, rock and roll parties and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the fun part. So now that's got me more into reading. And uh, I highly recommend that for everybody. Whatever your music you're into, um, whoever they are, a lot of times they'll put out a book and it's totally worth it picking it up and reading because you get hooked into it and it's a good laugh and a cry and these amazing stories because we're all human and when you're thrown in the spotlight there's so many ups and downs that are even crazier mm. than you have and uh, it just makes for interesting reading that's for sure. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's awesome. another way of finding out the stories behind all the amazing people and albums that they've produced. You have your own yeah. personal attachments to them, but then there's a whole bunch of background stuff that's gone on to make that happen. And getting into the details of that, I'm just like, wow, this is incredible. Oh, yeah. And then it's neat, too, because every other book that I've read, these musicians have connections to other musicians and other musicians and stuff, and then they have connections to these musicians, and it's all over the place, and then when you read other ones, they mention the same things, of, oh, when I was with this guy, and this guy talks about, oh, I was with, you know, with her, and this and that, or whatever, and, and it's, it's really having these connections and stuff, because that's what it's all about, music, and good connections, and, and just life, hopefully, more ups than downs, right? Well, this has been definitely an up for uh, me. Hopefully, it's been for you too. Um, we've connected now for about uh, just over an hour or so. Um, so, I think maybe it's a good opportunity to draw this to a close and then we can reconnect another time. Sounds great, yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad to be uh, chosen uh, to be thrown onto one of your videos, which is cool. I'm honored for you to be here. It's pretty cool. Uh, watching all of them and uh, having a good laugh and enjoying them. And uh, thanks for throwing the fire on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had... See, over here in Whippy, all I have is a gas fireplace. I wish I had a real wood-burning one like you do. I'm, I'm very jealous. Uh, it, it, so, it does require some maintenance. You know, good for you and enjoy. And uh, yeah, stay warm because I know it's freaking cold out there. Ah, uh, I gotta make sure the heater's working for Gracie. <laughs> Say hi to those goats for me, eh? Hey, Will do. <laughs> Alright, thanks Adrian. You're welcome. Okay, I'm gonna say bye. <laughs>